Good morning guys, welcome to my channel. So today's video is just working on the piece. There's no particular plan. I um, don't really want anything in particular achieved. It's just a general video of working on the, the piece. But what I was doing, which I have sort of need to rework, was this top corner here. I mentioned that I wanted to build a bit of a scene up here. So I grabbed some red fabric, cut off a piece, cut that in half and I laid it there and there. Then I went hunting for some lace and I pinned it down and I've just realized that I've pinned all of the layers together. So when I went to pick it up, this was attached to the back. So I thought, oh goodness me, start again. And then I thought, oh, I should just turn on the camera and you guys can just join me for a general crafting on the piece. I haven't finished that flower yet either there so i might even go down to that at the end we'll see how we go i just want to have a play with some general fabrics around my rows i haven't yet worked those yet so i want to collage some bits and pieces so let's let's just do this properly can i remember where this was now i think it was just coming out there i don't know doesn't matter for now Let's just pin it. I'll do some boro stitch over it, or camphor stitch, running stitch, probably in cream, probably not that one, the usual cream that I've been using in the project. And then this piece up here I thought could come up there as a bit of a, an add-on. And then I went to my laces and I found these in a continuous line so I thought I took three off and I thought well that could be the connecting element between the two areas now I've cut also some tatting off of a piece that I had it's an embroidered bird and the edge of the embroidery that's all puckered there better the edge of the embroidery had this gorgeous tatting so I've just disconnected the tatting from the piece you know the bird that's this little guy I picked him up locally there is a little um, video coming I'm just not sure if you would have seen it yet or you're yet to see it but I bought some embroideries from a local lady and this little bird was amongst it and this tatting was around the outer edge. It's like a little two-dimensional cover, three-dimensional cover that would go over something in the kitchen or on the table, like a teapot or something. I'm not sure. Um, and I was sitting here thinking, oh, I might start unpicking it to see how, how they did it. But they've stitched this together, right, you know, right sides together. And then when I started unpicking it, I started over here. I thought the tatting might be just sitting in the channel, but it's not. They've come back later with a stitch as they've made the tatting and stitched it into the seam. So there was no real easy way to unpick that other than cutting the tatting right off at the actual base of the knots. So I thought before I get carried away, I'm going to cut it off of this piece with this edge still intact so it's nice and secure because I may be able to just tuck that under something or use that as a, a feature. So I thought I might as well just leave that intact so it's ready to go. Little birdie will go onto an embroidered piece, that um, splash of colour piece. Now, I'm just sort of fiddling around here. I really don't know what I'm doing. I just want to create a bit of a collage of goodies. So I had thought of then putting the tatting in underneath this edge. But I don't really like it. Yeah, so I thought of doing that. But I have a selvage here, so I need to have a good think about, am I going to rip that selvage off like the other side? Or am I going to use that selvage and make it a feature? Or lay more fabric in here? That's my decision. 
So I don't like that there. I think this is quite chunky up here and I think this is just too delicate to utilize it. So then I started looking over here at where I could build some tatting in. And I thought about this edge here on the other side of my path. So I was just starting to pick this up and I went to move the piece and realized that that was all pinned together and I couldn't move the piece and I had a hang of a mess and I'm like, I should have the video on because you guys would think that was hilarious watching me struggle here to try and pin some elements into position and think about them at least. So my thought was, because I then turned on the camera and you've now just caught up. My thought was to maybe tuck that under there. Because these doilies, these unstitched doilies, they have these little perforated holes around the edge. That's where a crocheter, a crocheting person, would connect into and create their edge like that. Or tatting or whatever. So I was sort of wanting to do something there that a crocheter would have done. So I thought maybe this tatting might be a lovely element. So do I put it on top? Which is how it sort of would appear if it had been finished properly. And work my way around and add a tatting to the edge of our path. Doesn't quite work because of the style of the tatting but that doesn't matter that helps with collaging hmm I could get that peak into there I sort of like this if I trim that there that would make it to there and that would make it to there so that would work and stitch stitch that down or I could remove him all together and just create a tuck there which would be nice and neat and then I could finish it there with a little little stretch that would feel and maybe this little piece comes off all together and I use that somewhere else. I do like that. Does it go underneath? So we get that brown torpy edge over the top of the tatting. It makes it more delicate looking because if I did that, I could then start working the garden edge of flowers that could be there on the inside of it all. And the tatting is further back in the background. So that's the decision. I could still get this little guy out of there, that little peak, and we'd never know because this is tucked under. Be a bit fiddly, but I could definitely stitch that in there. And we'd have a path that looked like it was overpowering the tatting, like it's over it. Where if this goes on top of the edge, the path disappears back so you've got like a proper edge to your garden it's interesting isn't it how layers affect the dimension of your piece the other thing is it could be stitched on like that oh I do like that too so it becomes this little frilly little frilly edge the only thing with that is tatting tends to muck around a little bit as it, it twists and twirls around. Like it, it really does need to look gorgeous and to honour the 
the tatting, you really need to work your way through it and stitch it all down. But if that's my opinion anyway, but if you do like you do like that frilly lacy look, well then leave it sort of you know flick around. Do I tuck it under and then roll it forward is another way of doing it. And that would get it three dimensional, but then I wouldn't be able to do any any embroidery in there. Hmm. Um I think I want to do embroidery. I think I want the tatting to be underneath or on top. Definitely not doing the upward thing because I want to embroider. So that's option three out. Do I tack it underneath? And then I've got a great canvas here for lots of flowers. I think that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. We're going to get rid of that hard edge, but I'll use the hard edge to get me in there. And I think we'll start with the peak. I'm going to remove this little guy. And we're going to pretend... So this little fellow can come out completely. And that'll make a great little feature somewhere. So look at that. Isn't that just the loveliest morsel? Mm, there we go. Just found a home for it. Can stitch it down up there. There's a pin. So that can be... There. Okay, so that peak where he came out, we're going to invert that, pop it up in there. That will hold. Pop a pin in and I can come back an invisible stitch through there to pop that edging in for my garden, the path. Whether the path will reappear on this piece, I don't know. I don't think it will. I think I'm then just going to go hodgepodge images everywhere. I want to take the pressure off myself trying to make a path fit. And I think that's probably what's jiggering up a lot of you out there watching your comments and the videos and things. That this path business, do you have to give the path its feature through the whole project? No, not at all. You can give the impression of a path. And at the end of the day, if you're looking into a garden, you will see pops of paths here and there. But then you see all sorts of random things from arbors to greenhouses and foliage. So the path, once you've given homage to the path somewhere, Maybe to take pressure off yourself. Forget about the path. You don't need it again. And I think you might find that'll help you develop your piece a little more. And this is one of those types of pieces because I've got this big feature of the path and then I've got this gap in the middle and then we've got a hint of a path coming into the garden here but only the little bits that come out of that. So I think that may be the end of the path for me. Who knows? Maybe I'll do my peacock and we need to ground him in something. Flowers are easy. They, they pop in and that helps build the story. But maybe a couple more of those little cubes from the doily has to come in to help the peacock feel like he's standing on something. I, I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to trim that. 
there. And that can just tuck in up there. I think another thing I wanted to say too, because I'm getting some comments myself about, you know, you're struggling to start and well, maybe just do a page like we've done in the past for that prompt garden gate. Just do that. It'll be a beautiful piece. You can combine wildflowers, the garden gate, the fence and add it to your journals. You could do a whole journal just with garden theme. So if you ever do birds or use some mushrooms, you can, you know, just have a journal that has some blank pages in it for no apparent reason. And that's where these random stitcheries will find a home one day. No pressure. It's just a work in progress. And as the prompts come along, if there's a prompt that just you can't quite work out how to build it into your current design, do a page. Just like our volume one and volume two. So you get to play with the prompt. Because I'm sure the girls have got some fantastic challenges for us. But if it doesn't quite, you know, doesn't quite work with what you're thinking. Well, with your current, you know, role. I know some of my roles that I've got, when I think of birds and that, they're so small, I've got a piece that's this big that it's going to be quite difficult to do a bird in there because it, it's, you know, a bird this big. So then I'm thinking, okay, we need to get a bit abstract here. Let's just do a big bird. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be to size. So when I got that thought into my head, that really helped me sort of forget about the path anchoring my piece forget about a tree that you may have done and the bird wouldn't be in proportion to the tree it does not have to be realistic it can be stylized and then of course if you're really stuck start a second project which I think a lot of you are starting to do now you've realized that the the little stitchery is quite quick to do you can do a few little elements and then you're waiting for your next prompt go and start another piece and that's when a page would come into play and you could combine a couple prompts like your um, garden fence and the wallflowers I think the wallflowers are going to go through the whole thing either way so every prompt is probably going to have wallflowers somehow connected to it and wallflowers is such a fantastic prompt because there's no rules it is really quite random so I think I'm happy with that. I've pinned it down. Let's just go back up to here and see what else I can build into this little, little thing. Do I add some more fabrics? Just looking in my box of tricks here. It's some of the fabrics I used in the rows. They're very similar, so that's just not going to pop. What about that linen that came off of this piece? That'd be nice to include some of that. Beautiful linen. So let's just cut a piece off. A nice morsel. this piece too that I keep looking at and I want to use them but my thought is to actually cut them out of this but is that sacrilege I shouldn't be lazy I should just reproduce them like that Queen Anne lace I'd love to do a feature of that I'm not going to cut into it. Goodness sakes, Corinne, leave it alone. <laughs> oh, joy. Boy, oh, boy. So I'm just going to cut a chunk of this off. Square it up. We're just going to lay it down. 
Let's just move this over. Just creating elements of interest there. Let's have a think about this edge a little. No, I don't like it. I don't like it. I feel like I need to make a decision on an overall fabric to edge this piece. Like a French general fabric or something that's something that really suits it. Where's my red book? I know there's some fabric in there for projects. And maybe, sorry guys, I'm just jumped up to grab my red book project which has a lot of French general fabric like that what can we do with this what can we do with you I've embroidered this before. I don't really want to do too much more embroidery up this top. I'm looking for general fabrics that can create collaging. So I'm just going deep into the pile of fabric, pulling out this, and this is the roll from the Christmas project. in amongst all this that would certainly work that's gorgeous even that's got potential oh words and scraps I like these guys because they're already cut into scraps these are from a quilt. Oh, goodness me. How will this end up? Let's have a look at this. So I wanted to get a bit of that wheaty colour in there because I've got my sign down here that's got that wheat tone about it. Maybe we do a turned edge out here if I square that fabric up and that gets turned over why would I do that when I've got a selvage doesn't really matter I guess I don't know I'm just thinking out aloud here guys there's no plan I'm just sort of working the piece I do like that bunt. Let's just pin it. Pick up a needle. So that would stitch down there, for example. Then we grab some more fabrics and start layering. Maybe that goes over the top. Has a bit of a feature. I don't know, I don't know. I'm just gonna pin it, then I can look at it over the next few days and see if that's where I wanna go. I'm sort of creating this Feature in the top corner. Okay, so now maybe my tatting would work. Where's that snippet? Now it might work in there because it's got something with it. Let me just bring this down a little bit because I'm reaching out. Uh, not convinced.
doesn't have to make sense, not yet. <laughs> I sort of need now a connecting piece to bring all that together. Sort of feel like I'm getting away in a different direction of colour, mind you. Hello, Casper. Casper. Hmm. I don't know what I'm looking for. Do I want some words up there? Some text? What about a piece of advertising? Hey, Casper. What about... I think there's a piece in here somewhere. Hasn't found a home. No. Oh, there's a crinoline lady. Oh, gosh. I've been chasing crinoline ladies. It's become a... No. I know the piece I'm chasing. It's from Tim Holtz and it's advertising and I'd cut some out for a maybe one day to stitch somewhere. I've got my head now down under the table. Let's put the red book away. Um, okay, this is the piece. That's the piece there. Maybe I just picked this one up as well, but no, we're, it's getting out of hand. Put that away. Stop it. <laughs> oh, the table's exploding. Maybe one of these could go up there and be stitched in like a piece of text. I don't know. Sort of like what I've done there, to be honest. You can see my linen. Let's just have a look. Oh, I do like that green one. What's it saying before we get... Studio. It's American. It's not French. Well, we can't use that, can we? Is there any French in there? I think this was all American artwork, photography, Boston. Okay, forget about that idea, Corinne. We are heading down a French garden. Advertising elements from in, um, America have nothing to do with it. All right, forget about that. That's one rabbit hole we've kept our little noses out of. Just stay with the fabric. Stay with using base elements. And then we'll camphor, camphor stitch it all up here. Might be able to just slide that guy over a bit. That'll connect the two. And this is not a treatment that I want to do right around the whole piece. These are just random little, I'm trying to keep it loose. I'm trying to keep my, my patching loose. Having said that, we have this salvage, so maybe I do need to consider doing, I don't know, don't know. This is the beauty of this piece. We don't know. We don't know what's coming. We don't know the prompts. We don't know where it's heading. We don't have an overall picture in our minds yet. And that's the beauty of it, 
It's fantastic. It's liberating. That's what it is. I'm not going into this project with this big grand plan and I know where I'm heading. It is just see where we end up. And that, I'm going to come down a little bit from that corner. Just going to add it like it's a little morsel. I'm going to tuck that red under there. That was just a happy accident. So that's like that for no reason other than that. I like the little check. That can come on top or just underneath. Who knows? Maybe they just, just meet. And I'm going to turn that over because I can. Trying to keep it random. Or do I bring this piece out and lay that there so it connects? Yeah, I think I will. Gives that flower a little bit of a, a crown of fabric around it. Then I could do that. There's the little feature up there. Just jiggling things a little bit more just to make it sort of feel like it should be connected but not probably overthinking it about this point and then bring this piece of tatting through as a little element Band it. Hello, Bandit. He's now come to my window of my room and is looking at me. I think I might sneak that. I'm fiddling around here, but this is how it goes. It can sometimes take a little bit to get the right feel for it. Now I'm going to leave that. I'm not going to move it because I like, I like that. I just probably need to find something that can come down there. Is the tatting the right thing? Do I put the tatting this way? That might be better. That's better. I'll take the tatting right to that top corner, I think. <clears throat> and then I can end there. like that it's very random excuse me <coughs> I'll pin it and then I'll leave it and then I'll come back and look at it can't be making these big decisions all in one move especially if you're just not sure sort of want to make a very interesting collaged piece in the top corner here Casper's back hello Casper Everyone's antsy. Bandit is pacing. I wonder if someone's out the front. Casper's coming and going from the room. Maybe I'll just pull that down completely and get away from that. Yeah, there, that's what it is. I couldn't quite make that work there. So I've pulled that red fabric down to allow that cluster to be independent of this cluster. So there's just this little bit of air there and yeah, much, much, much better. Yeah, happy with that. So I need a pin to attach this little guy. I'm happy with that because that links this little curve 
into this. Yeah, that's better. I love how that's going up on the angle like that. Oh, I just think that's great. I could do probably something up there just to sort of carry our story. This linen didn't find a home, did it? Do we? Do we do that? Hmm. Once that's all stitched with something. I don't know, I think it's competing with that. At the moment, all I see is this big piece of linen. Okay, so what else have we got? Some little morsels here. Do we find a home for them? Yep. We found a home for him. He can go there. That helps link that to there. Yeah. I like that. I'm happy with that corner. Just those three little pieces. I've got this layer happening here so I can stitch that down now. I've got the little tassel of the lint of the calico coming behind. This guy coming through. Yeah. I do like that. But I will leave it and I will look at it over the next day. I've got to go out today and do some chores. So when I get back this afternoon, I can have another look at that piece. I'm not sure where in the um, programming this video falls. So this video may be the day of the prompt. It may be the day after the prompt. I'm just not sure. I'd have to have a look at my little, my little calendar where I work out where all these videos come up. I'm about four days ahead so we're waiting patiently for the next prompt but I may know it already all right no I'm happy with that I think we've got the start of something when it comes to the fabrics maybe we can do something with this again this wheat it's such a pretty fabric I did a quilt out of this plus um, there were dark blues and these colours all together in the pack and there were panels of linen in amongst it that I embroidered with lots of little flowers and I made a quilt for my mum. It was so pretty. I ended up making like three of them out of that same pattern. One for my husband's mum and hers was dusty pinks, dusty blues, real girly girl where the one I did for my mum and her bed was um, these rusty colours with the royal blue, the dark blue in amongst it. Oh, it's pretty. See, I'm going to just pop that piece there. It's just a little element. Might see if there's something that can come forward on it. Maybe I'll look in here at these. this piece here I can make out a flower look at that so maybe maybe it would work let's just lift up a little bit oh maybe that might look really really nice down here popping out from under there mmm I like that. You can just make out all that floral. So I'm just going to pin it. Okay. So I'm getting quite a red little thing happening down here and I'm thinking I'm going to work this a little bit more and get more of this wheaty 
that's a not a word is it wheaty maybe I'll pull this guy up in here Yeah, I like that. Yeah, love it. See, then you can start, once you start getting our patches down, our background fabric, it's the same principle we've been doing. We can start then having a look at laces and trims and see if we can then bring in some other layers of things to build the I think I can do better than that I think I'd go looking for an old piece of embroidery like an not an old piece of embroidery a edge to something like that someone's actually stitched just looking behind me, see if there's anything jumping out. No, there's not. But let's pretend it was this <clears throat> something that was just a nice crocheted edge and things like that so along these types of edges. And then you've got a little feature potentially here. You just pop in some little elements that peek through just to add interest. See, I don't even mind that. This tatting is the gift that keeps giving. But I only have that much left and we have a very big panel. So I'm not going to put it there because I think it could be used elsewhere. I'm just going to pin it to the side of my whole panel over near this house. I've got a little bit there, a little bit there, and then it's on the path. I need to save that for further down. Otherwise, I'm using all my goodies Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just looking at this rust again. I think this whole piece is going to be end up going around the perimeter in some way. Being that it's already cut into a strip is rather handy. But I'll leave it for now. Don't get ahead of myself. I might come up with another idea. Oh, I know. What about a bit of lace coming in? To add a decorative element to that edge. Just need a piece, I think. Just connecting that to there. Just a morsel. Just picking it up. Hmm. No. I sort of just like it blank. And maybe I do some embroidery through here. I don't know. Who knows what fun this is. Just looking in my scrap bucket. Is there a morsel over here that could be considered as another element to lay? I've only got a little bit of that left too. That'd be nice just to work into it somewhere. Maybe that could go off the bottom. It's good when you've got these pieces that Can be just added to the bottom of your panel and it becomes a layered layered element at the base of your panel it's always pretty just going to pin it there for now just 
color those lines. Found a home for it. It's a little crocheted piece that was in amongst somewhere. I don't know. I can't remember anymore. I've got so much crocheting bits and pieces that I just can't keep track of it all. And who did it? But it'd be lovely to find a little home for it. So I'm going to pin it here as the base of my panel. I think what that top corner needs is some motifs, some of this work. But to start, we've laid some background down. And I love this, so I'm definitely going to pop that there. It's now found a home. It's been rattling around on my desk. So I'm going to stitch this little guy into position. That looks pretty good. And even if I don't have something else that will continue along there yet, Something will come along. There'll be a piece of crocheting I'll find somewhere that could be added. Or a trimming off of something. How are we going for time? We've got 15 minutes. Ow! That's a needle upside down in my pin cushion. That's pleasant. So this little baby's found a home. Look at that. Down in that corner. I'm just going to stitch it on. I'm not going to overthink it. Because I'm positive there'll be something else that will come along that can join in to create the bottom of my panel. Yeah, happy with that. I haven't done that flower, have I? I'm getting sidetracked. But that's all good. We've got some more progress happening anyway. We've got a bit of an edge there. I'm happy with that. We're starting to build up this top corner. I'm going to stitch all that into position. And I might still add some more decorative pieces, but I'll get it stitched. I don't want to overpower the tatting. So I can't go too crazy there. I sort of want a bit of simplicity up there. There's so much happening everywhere. You sort of need these areas where there's something to tie into the design, but you know, you've got room for the piece to breathe a little. Look, I'm talking like I know what I'm talking about. I don't. I'm just verbalizing, I think, what my brain seems to like. Whether that's a, a skill or not, that's debatable. Let's go rummaging. Ooh. Look at that circular piece in there. More tatting. I've nibbled away at this already because that edge is gone. So let's disconnect that edge completely. And get the circular element out and see if we can find a home for it. So these are types of pieces that I class as backgrounds. Like we get these backgrounds into position and then let's have a look down here. Ooh, I do like that. It says it sneaks up there. Oh, I don't like that. Ooh, look at you. What's that? It's like I had a label or something once attached. 
It doesn't really matter because that's the underside anyway. If I sneak that up, it would help connect. Mm. I'll bring it right to that edge that so peeks out over the edge a little bit. That'll soften that selvage edge. I feel like we've terminated that whole corner now. And then we can build in here with something. Yep, done. Love it. See, because it's such a big panel, we can really play with bigger elements. you a lot more scope if this was my smaller pieces I'd have to probably cut cut it down maybe just take that center piece but this big chunky thing can handle pieces like this and there may be something collage over that you know who knows there might be a piece of linen come up into here with some other element on it that's a prompt I feel like I need to pinch that back a little bit to get more of that edge showing. So I think that needs to tuck in there a little. So it's just a hint of the red. Yeah, I like that better. And then I'll probably do a rough stitch around it, like an overcast stitch like that there. Mm. I could even put a third piece here. What have we got in the box of tricks? He's a bit white. He's too white. That's another piece I love too. That could be good down the bottom. It really is getting quite scrappy in here. But sometimes you just need little morsels like you know, just little things like that could be in the center of a flower. Very white. Hmm. I'll find something. No need to make a big decision today. That's that's aching for a feature right here. Maybe a prompt will come along that I can do something here. And even prompts like, well, I know... Um, Sarah said that butterflies, birds and things like that aren't going to be a prompt, but maybe a butterfly could come up here or a dragonfly or who, who knows. But at least we're getting some backgrounds down and getting them stitched in, framing elements that we definitely have made decisions about. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, I'm going to put this fabric away for now. See, that one there would work with our piece. Not, not needed today. Um, that can go away. That can go away. Time to clean up a little bit, girl. How quickly the desk explodes. Is this just a phenomena? See, we've still got this bit of tatting that's left too. Things like that can go onto houses and... Mm, Back into the pot. Not today. That linen can go back. Okay, so my homework is to get all this invisible stitch down and start thinking about decorative stitching with just cream cotton. Maybe some reds. Build up on all of this here. I've got this little guy that's going to stay there. And I've got the start of my path. Um, I can even come back through here with the, the dark chocolate thread because I'm really happy with the way that that went. So I've got 
flowers that I can do in that cream back up there. Where's that big piece of lace? This guy. I don't think it's the right piece, but I'll keep my eye open because that's machine made. Like it's not part of this. You know, I need sort of these types. I've got some collars somewhere. That'd be good, a, a lace collar or something, just a collection of, you know, those types of elements, something soft on the bottom. All right, that's good. Got plenty to do. I've got to, got to finish that because it's just bugging me. So, and I've got all my cottons here ready for that particular flower, so. One needs to get herself organized, and I'm going to finish that, stitch that. I can then head to the corner, can do some work around the rows. And like I said, I don't know where this video is falling, whether it's Wednesday or Thursday or Friday. I'm just not sure. So happy Wednesday, happy Thursday, happy Friday, depending on what the day is. And I reckon we will know a prompt, but I don't know that yet. So I can't wait. We're coming up to that time of the week again. All right, guys, have a lovely day. Oh, I've just spotted a scrap of fabric on the floor. That's, oh, come on, back up here. Let's get this little guy a home somewhere. We'll pop him there for now. And pin him because he appears further down. All right, I'm happy now. Whether he stays there or not, who knows? But he just jumped. Oh, look at that scrap. Hessian. Oh, bit of Hessian. Oh, I like that. I'm sorry, guys. We're still going. Oh, I like that. Yeah. That just, yeah. Mm, looking up at the TV on the wall, my iPad projects too, and I feel like I'm starting to frame my rows. I'm creating this border within the border. Mm, I could probably put some little flowers along there. Oh, hours of work. Hours and hours of work. Yeah, happy with that. All right, guys, I am going to go now. I will see you later. Have a good day. Bye for now.